guys, we're out in Oceanside today with Eli. We're going to be talking his 93 FXRP. All right, man. So before we get into bike, let's uh, talk a little about you, talk a little bit about you. I know you got a pretty cool backstory, like being from Alaska and that kind of deal. Kind of give us a little bit of your history. Yeah, man. So grew up uh, middle of the woods in Alaska. You know, little dirt road, 20 miles from a post office. You know, way out there, and uh, it was a good life, man. Kind of living off the land and hunting and fishing and doing that thing and uh yeah kind of ran through that for a bunch of years and then ended up uh being in a being in a band and figuring we needed some more people to play with rather than just the same you know 20 30 people in alaska coming to the yeah. shows so we uh you know loaded up and moved down to san diego kind of without knowing anyone you know back okay. in back in 2000 or something like that Okay, was that, was that just you or did y'all have the whole band? Yeah, it's a whole little crew of us, man. It was the guys in the band and a few more people. I don't know, it was nine or ten of us. Okay, so what made you what made you pick San Diego? You know, there was, uh, everybody kind of threw their hat in the ring in different spots. So some guys were talking Austin or Seattle, and I'd figured, uh, kind of paid our dues with the cold, nasty weather. <laughs> yeah. I was like, where's the best weather? Yeah. And uh, yeah. San Diego seemed to be the spot. So literally go. just rolled up, man. So, <laughs> what kind of music? Uh, back the original band back then was kind of uh, kind of some radio rock stuff, maybe okay. some new metal kind of stuff, and okay. then uh, moved down here and kind of reformed it into more, you know, what would be now metalcore, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Back then we were really trying to hit the hardcore thing, and some of the guys were into playing some solos and whatever. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. I, we got to. What was the band name? We were uh, the the one that kind of did a little bit more than was the uh, Dog and Pony Show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There so you go. it was pretty oh, fun, man. Got yeah. to run around and yell at people on a microphone and, you know. That'd be cool. I never, I never played instruments a whole lot. Um, I think playing a guitar or drums or anything like that would be something pretty cool to do. Yeah. Um, I was in band a couple couple years growing up. Played the trombone. Hey, sweet. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, so uh, obviously you've had a couple of ch – you, you have a chopper and you're building one now. Um, yeah. You've got this thing. So kind of what got you into motorcycles, um, that whole deal? Yeah, so growing up, again, in Alaska, it was uh, riding snowmobiles was the thing, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of riding snowmobiles, loved them. Um, at the same time, my dad was always kind of into motorcycles, and uh, I'd always kind of dream of living somewhere where a motorcycle would make sense. It didn't make too much sense in Alaska to get one. You get a two-month riding window. Yeah. But uh, um, kind of always into them and dirt bikes and everything else, and then, man, just being in California, seeing bikes all the time, and Probably about 03, I got a little Honda Rebel. Okay, yeah. From a guy that didn't run, right? Like, hey, here's a bike. You want it? I'm going to throw it away. And uh, kind of took the little Honda Rebel and made a made a cool thing about it because I'm halfway handy with the hands and whatnot. Yeah. So built a little bike there and then was like, yeah, no, Harleys, you know, need the Harley. So yeah, kinda... see if you're going to do a lot of tinkering or whatever, it's probably yeah. a little bit easier than, well, you do, you do a little more tinkering. You're actually building some of yours, right? Yeah, I built a bunch of bikes back in the day and started building handlebars and i'd get mad about getting too many orders so i'd jack the prices up because i didn't want to build them anymore and yeah. uh but i i liked building bikes that that were more like what i wanted to build mm -hmm. whenever i was building something for somebody else i didn't i had a hard time following their vision rather than how i wanted to do it that um so i had a lot of fun with that kind of did probably the normal progression of like i got a little sporty and built a bike and then a couple more sporties and then you know started getting into shovel heads and everything else and and uh I don't know, man. It's probably been 40 or 50 bikes by now over the years, you oh, know? Oh, wow. So um, but yeah, I've kind of got my main baby, my, uh, my shovel head chop in the garage there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then uh, yeah, I started getting into some more of the Dynas, and they're actually funner to ride, right? I ended up having back surgery. Oh, and, wow, yeah. You know, all the rigid choppers, I love them. They're my heart. But they're... Uh, After back surgery, they probably doesn't work too well. They don't work as good. You know, <laughs> you know if you want to come out, you want to come out, push a button and ride a motorcycle, yeah. you know? And the other ones are great. I'll always have choppers, but... Uh, Want something a little more comfortable sometimes? There you go. So, obviously, like you said earlier, the 93 FXRP, kind of, what got this one started? Man, this one, it was kind of an accident, kind of twice. I had a, I had a Dyna. What was it? It was, it had a, it was the uh, FXDXT. I had okay. a pretty nice XT going on, and uh, it got stolen. So, walked out in the morning, and I was an idiot, and left it in front of my house, and it wasn't Don't there the next morning. Yeah. And I'd also managed to, uh, on the Geico app, 
change my coverage to just a liability i thought on my chopper because it sat in the garage but it was the wrong bike whatever so oh, yeah lost out on the bike yep. it was a bummer so i was running around town just telling people to keep their eyes peeled went into uh ghetto choppers those are my boys right there tim and chris and was just like hey keep your eyes peeled see this bike you know smack the guy get it whatever and uh tim's like well hey if you need a bike we got satan here and uh this was Satan. So this was a bike he'd built for himself okay. back in the day, right? right. And uh, I'll probably get half the story wrong, but he built it for himself and ended up selling it to a guy. And that guy needed to get money for whatever. It kind of changed hands a few times yeah. and just so happened it was in the shop that day. And I was like, all right, well, yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Cool bike. <laughs> I'm yeah. always into the FXRs and we'll it, it, was a, it was already a nice bike. It had been used and abused a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, fully rideable, right? So... Yeah, kind of got a bike stolen and got this one in its this older one. form. So I guess giving the ghetto guys a shout out, like y'all remember the FXR that was Gray's like very first episode. Uh, Tim and Chris built that one. I think they did a bunch of the work on his Dyna kind of deal. Yep. Um, so they recently they recently had uh, or their location got closed, right? Or getting some condos there or something like that. A yeah. robot bay, it was all like fenced up and everything. Yeah, good old gentrification, right? Yeah. So. So they're, they're, they're setting up shop somewhere else, though, I assume? Yeah, they got a new shop. Uh, they're already up and running. I'm okay. sure I'm sure it'll turn out pretty epic pretty soon. Okay. They, they do a good job with everything. So they're still around and kicking just different locations. Yep, different cool. location, man. The uh, Trying to build all these condos everywhere. It's kind of hard on the on the people trying to do the blue-collar oh, stuff, you know? Yeah, 100%. So, cool, man. All right, well, let's, let's just jump into your bike. Kind of like yeah. overall, you had the bike. Like, kind of what, what was your end goal when y'all started the build and, like, so honestly, like I said, it was it was this bike known of as Satan, right? And it, apparently it's given a bunch of people a hard time over the years, whether it's, you know, throwing them off of it or whatever it's trying to do to them. So we were trying to breathe a little little new life into it. It kind of started with, honestly, it was having a hard time starting. So we were trying to chase that down a little bit. Okay. And uh, then it was like, hey, let's do some better brakes on it. And then I think just out of the blue, I texted Tim over there and was just like, Dude, go crazy on it. Here's kind of what I'm thinking. And, uh, you know, during during COVID, it, it took a couple years and it turned into this baby right here. So it uh, it was a fun run. Okay. But yeah, literally started from, hey, let's do some, uh, let's do some of these crown cut rotors on here. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, it's like, let's just rip it apart. Let's rebuild the motor. Let's do it. Just kind so, of spiral from there. Yeah. All right. So talking about the motor, like kind of walk us through everything you're running on the motor. Yeah. So the motor, it's... Uh, it's basically your SNS 124, okay. right? Um, so automatically it's got some juice. It was a little old and tired, so they ran through the whole thing, uh, put a little or easy start cam in it because yeah. it was a beast to crank this thing over yeah. and uh, fires up a lot better now. But yeah, they kind of refreshed everything all the way top to bottom in there. But oh. yeah, I know it. I know it fires up a lot easier. I know they were having some issues with the compression releases on the old motor and some of those parts were you know worn out. So literally just freshened it up gave it gave it the run through gave it the run through yep are you running on like the clutch side and everything like that and commercially are you doing anything different over there to make up for the big 124 or anything yeah what's that uh i can't remember the clutch they got in there but they've upgraded all that stuff yeah you know, literally kind of everything's of upgrading this bike man there's nothing there's nothing really basic about it i mean it's got you know an original harley trans but it's got you know andrew's gears everything in it okay. um I mean, there's, yeah, there's nothing that hasn't been kind of... And we were talking about this pipe earlier. It looks, pipe looks pretty sick. So what pipe is that? Yeah, so that's uh, Royalty Racing. Guy out of the south down there. He he builds a really nice pipe, man. I saw, I think I saw it on one of FXR Division's bikes and okay. was like, I had to track it down. Like, what's this pipe, you know? And yeah. uh, everybody, you know, everybody's running this, the wikis and all this stuff, and they're great. Everything's cool. But I don't know, something stood out about that little up curve and yeah, I kind of dug it. It's definitely and, different. Uh, looks looks different than everything else. So. Yeah, so ordered that up and yeah, he came through pretty good on that and it looks sharp on there, man. And it sounds good and it feels good. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, you mentioned you mentioned the brakes earlier is one of the first things right off the bat. So you're running, I guess, the Lindell rotors front and rear. <laughs> yeah, so we got the Lindell rotors, you know, the crown cuts, and then we got the Brembos on the thing. Um yeah, dual disc up front, right? And, yeah, uh, so that's something y'all had to switch to up there? Did it come dual disc? It came dual disc, came yeah. Dual disc. Okay. Yeah, had dual disc on it. Um, yeah, did, you know, it's got, I don't even remember what springs and everything in it, but it's got pretty high-performance springs in the front, and 
Okay, it's all the Olins back yep, here, right? Got the Olins in the back, and what's are those? Fourteens or what are those? I think they're like thirteen. I think they're thirteens okay. in the back. Yeah, we had a little taller once, and I kind of liked it squatted down a little bit more. Yeah, the fourteens. Uh, Emma's Dyna, we originally running like thirteen inches or whatever, yeah. and it still get a little bit high, but it's a little, it's a little lower. And we're the yeah. the fourteens now, and it definitely that one inch seems to make. A lot more of an in a difference than a one inch kind uh, of deal. An inch is quite a bit on these yeah. bikes, you know. Um, what uh, are these stock wheels or? No, so these wheels are from uh, Chopper House. I think they're down in Texas. Okay. Um, but yeah, Chopper House did these. Um, can't remember what they call them, but they did that, and we wanted to do you know a nice gold on them, so they they did all that over at their shop and sent yeah. them over to us time with your paint and then i guess your two got gold tubes in there as well yeah i got the gold did the did the cliche black and gold man but i've always i've always dug it man and i got a it's i got a joe king helmet right a little okay. three-quarter helmet yeah and i always stare at it and i'm like I, the bike has to match this helmet yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I almost made the bike to match the helmet i mean that's fair i think uh black and gold if you do it right it's it's a classic look you can't Dude, go, it's traditional you can't go man. Wrong, man black um, and gold some little pops of chrome in there it's just a it's a thing like Saying my dad back in the day, so I was a kid, he'd be like, you know, motorcycles are great as long as they're black. So <laughs> it's kind of a lot of my bikes have been black over the years. I mean, it's it's hard to go wrong. And you've, yeah. got, you've got some nice, I guess we can jump into that. You've got some nice touches of the paint with like the gold striping. And yeah. And a little hot decal with a little wing. And oh, FXR yeah. And little, like the that, little so. custom little FXR wing yeah. logo in there. So who, who did all your paint? So uh, Noel with the... Uh, Blue Collar Father Customs. Okay. Um, kind of got turned on to him a while ago. Local guy. Okay. And uh, pretty hungry in the game, and he's yeah. he's really doing a good job with stuff. Yeah, so, this, this looks great. So did you just tell him I want black and gold, and he ran with it, or how'd that work? Yeah, I gave him some inspiration picks. I generally like most of my bikes to stay decently traditional looking. Like, I kind of want the paint to look like maybe it could be factory, but it's different, right? Okay. So I, I always try to pick, you know, just old Harley how they did stuff and uh yeah it's got a it's 100 percent got like that classic look exactly kind of just the dual pinstripe and trying to follow the lines and don't go crazy and uh yeah he came through good man i think it looks pretty sharp cool uh and then i guess you know, the fork sliders y'all went y'all did like kind of the wrinkle block look up there yeah so these were actually the the sliders that were on it okay and uh yeah, rather and at first we were like, oh, these will kind of match the bags, and the bags were kind of that that rough, you know, mm -hmm. original texture. Yeah. And so we left these textured. Then we didn't like the bags being rough, so we sent them back okay. over to to blue collar, and we're like, and he had to just go to town, go to town. <laughs> sanding yeah. them down to smooth oh, and polishing them. So uh, there. he put an outstanding amount of work into those, and then at the same time, it ended up these still looked good like this, so we kind of left it, you know. Yeah, I agree. Those. I think it, the wrinkle actually works, and it yeah. probably holds up a lot better. It uh, does. You're not, you know, rocks and everything else. It, it's, it's yeah. just a tough thing. You'll see those black fork lowers, and they're just like the gloss shot ones, out. They're just like beat to crap with rocks and everything like that. For so, sure. Um, yeah. Hey guys, want to take a second to talk about Get Lower Cycles? Get Lower Cycles is in Warminster, Pennsylvania. They have their own shop there. Where they do fab work, installs, motor work, dyno tunes. They're also a huge source for performance Harley parts. They've got a great site set up. They carry suspension, brakes, seats, whatever you need from the best brands out there. Not only is Get Lower coming on board to help me bring more of this interview series to you, they're also gonna make it easier for you to find any of the parts that we've just discussed. So for each build, Get Lower is gonna create a link that I'll drop in the description that has all the parts laid out that we just discussed. So say you're interested in running a suspension setup we just went through, or you just have the typical what fairing and bars question is that. All you gotta do is click on that link below and they'll have everything laid out for you. Simple and easy. Make sure you check these guys out. If you like watching these series, make sure you use those links to order parts. Supporting them helps them support me so I can bring more of this to you. Let's get back to it. Cool, man. I uh, see so you also got your little uh, GPR stabilizer up here on your top tree as well. Yeah, I did the GPR stabilizer. Um... It kind of had that cool gold look and it adds a little tech into it. I honestly, I mean, coming from dirt bikes, obviously it's a necessity. Yeah. Don't know if it's a necessity on these bikes, but it looks cool. Oh yeah, it 100% <laughs> looks cool. Um, who was it? I rode somebody on, I'm blanking. I rode somebody's bike with one uh, a couple weeks ago and I think I wanna, I'm gonna put one on my bagger now too. Yeah. I feel like it, 
it's it's fine, but I feel like it, it uh, could use a little bit of extra stiffness up there. Yeah. So and especially it, with like I went like two over, so I think I'm gonna throw one on mine, some form of like stabilizer kind of yeah. thing. So and I haven't put enough miles on it yet with it. Like I think this build's pretty fresh, man. I've probably got thousand miles on it okay. so far. So yeah. I've been playing with it and you know, adjusting it and I don't know yet. I I definitely think I like it down there. It's a good pop. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I guess walk us through your, what, what bars are these? So these are the G bars from FXR division. Okay. Um, but I think they're, I think they're 14 inch. Okay. They look like they're, yeah, they look like they're around that like 13, 14. Yeah. Inch I think mark. they're 14. They, they laid out pretty good for where my reach is. Um, again, that was another one I saw on, on some of the FXR division bikes. I was like, that's a cool look, man. Let's, yeah, they let's make go some, with that. They got some nice looking stuff on their bikes. Like, yeah. All their bikes are ridiculous so and you got your little gauge pod mounted up there at the top as well yep we got that up there it uh just gives you the rpms man nice and yeah. basic is that, a, is that a digital gauge it is yeah yeah, okay. yeah i think it's dakota digital okay um that was actually left over from the original rendition of the bike so okay. it it made the cut onto this version there you go looks like you got your fuel gauge digital as well yep fuel gauge digital matches up there same thing it's like red leds it looks kind of sharp at night oh, yeah everything close sweet yeah gives a little bit of that uh, new age technology. A little bit of tech in there, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Uh, what seat you're running? That is an original Corbin seat pan, and then uh, my buddy Rex out here, he's a local guy, does insane custom, you know, upholstery work, you know, mm -hmm. all the old hot rods, everything else, and yeah. he's done a couple seats for me, and he did that, and there's a matching little, uh, little back pad for it, too. I don't have on right now, but okay. yeah, he did good. We're going to have him do the seat on a chopper I got building two to kind of match that one. So okay. just the one Jake's building? Yeah, Jake's building Jake at a High Women Co. is building me a nice chopper right now that's gonna kind of go with this bike. I think we're gonna okay. do the black and gold as well. We're gonna kind of make the seat match. It's very much a hot rod looking pan okay. shovel. So kind of drag inspired very nice. old school hot rod look on that. It'd be cool to see that. I like all of all the Jake stuff. So yeah. pretty cool to see. Uh I ruined the I guess Brembo's back here with, I guess you got your Krause hanger. Yep, got um, the Krause hanger. Um, yeah, on the Brembo's and then uh, capped off nicely with that beautiful Brock swing arm, man. Yeah, those those things look good. Which oh. that thing, I don't know, man. This thing was already decent performance bike in its old revision. And mm -hmm. then that's one of the biggest thing I notice is that riding it now is it stiffened it up so much. Especially that rear. Yeah, we the Dyna's got a... A CNS or whatever on that. Yeah. And when we put that on there and we did, we did a lot of stuff at once. Um, we even changed the suspension up in the rear. But when we put that swing on there, it just, yeah, added a lot of the rigidity to the back, especially like in corners and stuff like that. You don't get any kind of weird, like, not soft back in. But yeah. Um, but you kind of do. I mean, they're, they start feeling squishy and especially old bushings and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about that because I'd never been, like I said, I'm mostly chopper based, right? Yeah, yeah. And a few, a few, you know, different bikes over the years but i'd never done a swing arm and uh tim was like you gonna put this swing arm on <laughs> and i'm like you think it's gonna be good and he's all world of difference i'm like well, order one up let's go yeah so we, we did ours when i did mine uh it was like now when i put it on the bike when i had it it was I, to be honest it was mostly like a look thing sure because i like polish and everything totally. and it was like a black bike but dude you put it on it made it made a huge difference so. I, was, I was a little bit in the same boat thing yeah. and it's just gonna add to the whole you know you yeah. kind of want to update everything and uh but that's extremely noticeable, man. Yeah. And then, did you have you having to hold both of them? The weight, I, no, I didn't. The I did weight not. difference is insane. I imagine. It I is. imagine. Um, no, when you put a chain kit on there, you probably balance some of that weight sure. savings out. Sure. Um, so I see you did. You are running a chain. Oh yeah. There. Yep. Got the chain on it. Um, I don't remember what the sprocket count is. We might change that around a little bit right now. It's. Uh, I could have a little more legs. You know, you get up there around. Okay. Around one ten, you're, you're kind of run running out, right? Yeah. There's still juice, but yeah. kind of winding the thing up. Uh, yes, yeah, so you get some more low end, but you yeah, it up top. and it's a wheelie machine, right? I'm yeah. not the best, you know, wheelie rider in the world, but it it wants to hop it right up. So. Okay, yeah, oh um, yeah, do something to get a little more exactly top end out of it. Yeah, cool. Um, dude, my thing looks killer. Uh, what else? Uh, I guess you running a separate he different headlight up there at all? Yeah, it's that weird kind of gyro headlight, which made okay, the cut like, too. So it's LEDs, and then, you know, when you lean it, it, it kind of lights up the corner. You. Okay. It's a little, I don't know. It kind of just made the cut from the old revision, but it's kind of cool. You start it up, and the lights go around. Okay. You know? 
Do you and, like the light kind of moving with you? Is it weird or do you like that? You don't really notice it. Okay. I mean, if you're going 10 miles an hour around some corners, you can see it lighten up. But for so, the most part, you just, okay. It's whatever. But it looks good up there. We're uh, waiting on a couple parts. Going to do, you know, some, some lights in here. Pods in there. Yeah, we might do some of the Pia lights or maybe go with some Baja designs or something in there. Okay. But Yeah, those, you get some of those off-road lights and well, yeah. you probably know those things. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. I got a ton of them on the whole yeah, FJ are, Cruiser over there. Those things. I got uh, two of the ridges in the road glide, and it's, they bright. <laughs> yeah, they light things up. Uh, cool. <laughs> you get what you pay for with LEDs, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hundred uh, percent. They they weren't cheap, but they're, yeah. they're nice. Exactly. So, um, and you got some, those are, are those some Nest Mirrors? Is that what those are? Yeah, the, I think they're the Nest Mini Stalkers, they're yeah. called. Um, yeah, I like those. Originally, we put some gold ones up there. It was a little... A little too much gold up there, so yeah, especially up high. Like backed that. off with yeah. the black ones again. Um, yeah, I can't remember what those uh, those levers are, but but a little gold pop there with those. Yeah, there you go. Sweet man, I think that was quick, but hey, I think we got a lot of it. So obviously, you mentioned the the light pods up front. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit of different gearing or something to get you more top end. But beyond that, like, you got anything else you plan on doing? You know, beyond that, it's probably always going to be a working progress because uh, that's kind of how i roll with these things mm -hmm. you know you're happy with it and you're always happy with it but then you're like what if we did this to it so yeah yeah been bouncing the idea back and forth of maybe doing a baker six speed in it okay. maybe yeah. um but again it's awesome right now so we'll see what happens down the road yeah i see you got you some uh little stc those mini floorboards down there yeah i do i like those floorboards man i think i'm gonna do the same ones for the passenger pegs that'd probably be a change coming up those are, uh, I've been wanting to, I've been trying to talk Emma into running those because Gray had some on his dyna. Yeah. And they're, they're not super big, but they're like super comfortable. Totally. Um, so yeah. Yeah, totally comfortable. They lock in really good. I haven't had a move on me, you know. Um, yeah, what else is this thing going to do? I don't know. She's pretty close. I'm going to throw, like I mentioned, I've got the little matching backrest there. Yep. Um, so I think I'm going to powder coat the, the struts for those and put that on the bike. Put that on, okay. Um, Makes my wife happier to jump on when she's got a backrest, which and it looks cool. It, it adds a good little, it a little feel back there. Look to it, yeah, yeah. yeah if, you, if you're riding two up, yeah, yeah. some kind of like backrest to see bar thing is is a is a must. Totally. Um, cool, man. Um, I think that's it. So, if yeah. anybody's got any questions for you on this bike or anything else, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, it's probably just good old Instagram, man. Eli underscore Wolfa. Okay, with an A at the end. Cool. So check cool. that out. And yeah, man, you need good bike stuff. Tim and Chris at Ghetto Choppers will hook it right up. Yeah. Can't argue with that. So, there you go. Um, cool guy. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'll put all his info in the description. If you want to reach out, um, I'll drop the Get Lower link with all the parts in there. Um, check out my site, uh, Patreon, all that stuff. And yeah, bye. Cheers. <laughs>